those words being 613 apart, inter encoded on an interval of 50, is less than one in 186 million. Interestingly, not all Bible codes point toward the future. At least some of them take us back to the very beginning. In Genesis 2, talking about the Garden of Eden, encoded within that one chapter are all 25 of the trees that are mentioned throughout the Bible. It's all in that second chapter. Also, Eden is encoded 16 separate times. While the encoding of the names of trees is not prophetic, it is certainly instructive. Imagine trying to write a meaningful short story using only 635 words, the number of English words in the second chapter of Genesis, and at the same time, seamlessly incorporating the names of 25 specific trees and, just for good measure, 16 references to the place where they grew. Yaakov Ramsel, a messianic pastor with a rich background in Hebrew, has spent many years researching the Bible code without the aid of a computer. His research further demonstrates the skill of the cryptographer. The first chapter of Genesis is the most magnificent structure. It's the basis and a foundation of all the Word of God. What God has placed in there are over 1,000 biblical names of people that are recorded in the surface reading throughout the whole Bible, Old and New Testament. There is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all their wives. In Genesis 1:21, where God talks about the great seas, in there is encoded Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. He also placed the name of Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, the Pharaoh, and even the two midwives in Exodus 1. God has encoded within that one chapter many, many thousands of insights for us to find. They're not secrets, they're just hidden. Since publication of the original code research, literally hundreds of references to people and events have been discovered people and events that could not have been known at the time of Moses. But what about the rest of the scriptural writings? What of the Tenach, or Old Testament, and the New Testament? Is there evidence that the code phenomenon exists in all of the inspired scriptural writings? We put these questions to Roy Reinhold, a retired U.S. Navy officer, a Hebrew code researcher, and a Bible code software reviewer. He is familiar with a variety of encryption methods and has developed a unique and a compelling approach to code research. In addition to finding the Bible code in the Torah, researchers have found code matrices throughout the entire Old Testament. My working model is to look for visually clustered terms that are close together and form a tightly constructed matrix. The matrix must also have a coherent and meaningful message. This matrix in the Torah, for example, yields an enormous amount of information about 57 specifically accurate items surrounding Thomas Edison's life. The name of his wives, places lived, and his inventions are all clustered together within this matrix. If it seems astonishing that so much could be encoded in such a limited amount of text, consider this. In the 12th century, Nachimedes, another of the great Jewish sages, made the startling claim that all of Israel's history could be found in the 32nd chapter of Deuteronomy. He was challenged by a student and asked to prove such a statement by finding the student's name. Nachimedes accepted the challenge, told the young man to look carefully at a certain passage in the 32nd chapter of Deuteronomy and introduced him to the idea of ELS codes. The student, it is reported, did indeed find his name. The concept of the Bible code, it seems, has been around for centuries, awaiting, perhaps, the invention of the computer to prove it actually existed. But has it been proven? While the critics of the Bible code continue to attack the original Bible code discoveries, numerous software developers have commercially advanced Bible code findings way beyond the pioneer discoveries of the late 1980s. The old ongoing debate is no longer relevant since the critics do not even address the new research of today. For example, 27 distinct terms relating to the bombing of the American Embassy in Nairobi, Kenya were found within two weeks of the incident. The central term was Embassy. USA was found three times along with truck, bomb, 
247 were killed. Nairobi, Kenya, the phrase to murder or destroy, the date, including day, month, and year, the time of day, the names of the two men identified as the bombers. There are those who would suggest that if the search had begun three weeks earlier, the whole tragedy might have been avoided. Others believe that nothing we do can change God's divinely ordained plan. The question still to be answered is, can we or should we try to alter future events discovered in the Bible Code? Will the Bible Code, like the sunrise, illuminate what lies before us? Or are we pursuing a setting sun, fading into the darkness? Will the future always be just out of sight? Or is the key to unlocking the secret of tomorrow now in our own hands? In the messages of the Old Testament, is there a verification of the central character of the New Testament, Jesus Christ? And perhaps most importantly, can the truth of the Bible Code be proven? We'll find out when we come back. When Rabbi Solomon, the great one of Vilna, suggested everything that ever was or ever will be can be found in the Torah, he wasn't speaking in generalities. He insisted it was there in minute detail, implying that your name and mine as well as our life history, and possibly even our life destiny, was to be found there. Could such a thing be possible? In Psalm 139, we read, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Could it be that the book referred to is the very Bible we hold in our hands? Dr. Rips believes we are currently dealing with only the two-dimensional aspect of the code, and that even that is much more than we could ever decipher. But he also believes the code is more like a hologram with at least three and perhaps four dimensions in which all the world's academic, spiritual, and scientific knowledge might be stored. According to Prophecy in the News, an Oklahoma City publication, one of the greatest scientific discoveries of all time came about as a direct result of decoding certain words in the Bible. In 1905, a 26-year-old physicist broke the code from an ancient Hebrew word found in Genesis 1.16, Hachmaor, which translates the great light or the, the sun. He reversed the word. And when he reversed the word, now we have rum, it means rays. He took mass and took light and put it to the second power. Now the paper that he turned into his peers, other scientists, gave us what is commonly known is the theory of relativity, or better known as E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light to the second power. Many years later, Albert Einstein confessed the source of his great find to uh, some rabbis in New York City. He explained to them that within this one area, Genesis 1.16, that that's where he found his deduction and his formula for E equals MC squared. And he laughingly told uh, the uh, rabbis that uh, it's there, find it if you can. But it's not known whether he shared this with the other scientists in this world. I don't believe he did. Perhaps he was wise to keep it to himself. Today, the controversy over the Bible code pits scientist against scientist, theologian against theologian, and with new discoveries being made on an almost daily basis, the inevitable confrontation between Christians and Jews assumes new intensity as the name of Jesus Christ continues to emerge from the recent code research. The structured matrix approach to code research has given us an opportunity to see in a graphic way how the words and phrases tie together. This is one of the larger matrices running from Genesis 1 to 2 Samuel. Here the central term is Elohim Yeshua and crossing Yeshua is Messiah. Right of the central term is Messiah, and left of the central term is Messiah. Here in the lower right relative to the central term, we find Savior, Redeemer, and Messiah. And here, crossing all these terms is the true or genuine one, and finally, Yahweh or Jehovah. It is impossible to conclude that there is not a clear, coherent message encoded in this matrix. That message is that Jesus is the true, genuine, and real Messiah, and he is Jehovah in the Old Testament. In Genesis 1 and verse 17, 